that stands between you and your destiny. Ha <laughs> Welcome back to Monster Lab. On this edition, we're gonna show you how to make a plaster mold of your monster. You're not like the Grim Reaper in disguise, are you? Here we go. Hey, back off of that pixie dust! Okay, so you're not going to need a whole lot of supplies. You'll need a five gallon bucket. You'll need chip brushes to put the plaster on and then throw away, so don't put a lot of money into those. This uh, towel's not absolutely necessary, but it's nice to wipe the sweat off your brow because it's a little bit of work. Um, hemp is very nice. Again, not necessary. Uh, it, it strengthens the mold and um, uh, we like to use it, but if you're careful with the mold, you don't have to have it. The last thing um, is pottery plaster. We use this USG number one pottery plaster. Works great. Um, it's available a lot of places. Um, uh, there's other plasters that would work. We like this best. Now, since you were last here, I have sprayed this with Krylon brown leather spray paint, glossy. Now, I'm sure there's other colors that would work. I'm sure there's other paints that would work, but when we find something that works, we're through. So all our sculptures get sprayed with this brown leather. It is nice because you can really see the white plaster and, and the, uh, the brown pops through real well. Uh, but it, like I say, probably other things could work. Krylon, glossy Krylon works well. All right, so let's start making a mold. We use a big mixer and, it's, and, and we weigh the stuff and all, but I had this trick taught to me by a USG representative back in the day. And so it uh, works very well. You start by putting water in to the, the uh, bucket. Now, basically you wanna think about trying to get a couple of inches over the whole thing. That's maybe a little overkill. If you're a really good mold maker, you don't need that much, but, but I would try to figure the amount of water you need based on what you think that is in volume of water. Now you are gonna add plaster and that'll raise the level a little, but not a whole lot. Maybe it's 25%. Uh, but don't worry if you miss guess, cause you can just mix another batch of plaster and put that on it. Um, so uh, that, that, that it just, it's a best guess situation. So. You get the plaster and just start scooping it in. Now, what he told me was you just roll it through your fingers and get it in there so that you're not getting any big clumps. Now, there'll still be some clumps formed, certainly, but this just minimizes the amount of clumps. Now, I'm gonna move around the front here so you can see what I'm doing and um, you can understand what, uh, what's going on in there. So, I'm just sifting it through my fingers and I will continue to do this and still, until it starts to form islands on the top of the plaster. Um, it, It's uh, a, a very effective way of getting, getting the right amount of plaster in there to where it's just getting saturated. And you've got to wait a little bit. You'll have to keep adding it. It'll start to, start to form islands, but then they'll sink. And um, that should give you a nice, thick, eh, it's still sinking, hold on. As you can see, this is an exact science. 
All right, so they seem to have kind of stopped. And so I'm going to put this back on the table. So at this point, you can just let it sit for a minute or so and hopefully absorb in so there's not a lot of clumps. But there will be some clumps, and you'll just have to deal with those um, uh, as you stir it. Now, I'm going to stir it with my hand. This all washes off eventually. And um, so it's, it's, you could wear gloves and stuff, but they need to be tall because you're going to stick your hand in there. But you basically just start stirring. And what's, what I'm doing in the water is I'm stir and I'm squeezing lumps. And so now once I've started stirring, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start the process of recrystallizing. So you just scoop it out and just pour it on the sculpture. And you can get, it's a little bit sloppy, you know. All right, then you get your brush and you get every detail. I like to go north and south, east and west so that you're for sure getting everything. Um, try not to be too rough, you know, you don't want to scratch your sculpture, but the chip brush will allow you to get in there and get, get all the little details. And you can just keep going back. Now this is where, uh, one of the things I like about the paint, if this was just clay, especially if it was clay that was a little bit dry, like you do sometimes when you're sculpting, letting it dry out, the clay itself absorbs some of the water and it, um, it makes for a weaker, a weaker mold right where you need it strong, right in the inside surface. Now I'm going to go over just to make sure I've hit these areas thoroughly, even though I'm pushing some of the plaster off. That's okay. This stuff's not that expensive. All right, now I'm going to put some more on. You want to kind of keep it covered and and at some point you want to quit disrupting you know because it'll it'll start it'll be starting to um, set I'm not positive I got these antenna real good so I'm going to hit those once more Now, there's points like we're at right now where you've caught up to, to, the, um, to the set time of the plaster. Now, if you're doing a bigger, um, a bigger mold, it might get ahead of you. And so there's times when we're working on really big molds that we will um, have two or three people on it just because... You know, you can't really change the set time of the plaster. It's going to set when it's going to set. Now, you can make runnier batches and things, but I, I don't recommend it. I think USG's roughly 30% water to 70% plaster is, is very good. And, uh, and we're doing that the, uh, the easy way by just... Um, Pouring it in by hand, but but that's kind of the goal to get close to that mixture, and that's how to do it without the scale. You know, we've got this big heavyweight scale, and then we've got this big like prop pro propeller that stirs it and so forth. Okay, so now we wait. The plaster will will set, but you you get to a point where it's like eh, it's too runny to keep pouring plaster on, just runs off. Um, and that's okay. You can, you can check out your sculpture thoroughly. A lot of times you'll miss things like undercuts. So at a time like this, you could try to not disrupt it. It's not going to hurt it at this point, but just make sure you're getting all the, uh, the undercuts well, uh, even though they're hard to see. 
Um, and then you just you just chill for a few minutes till it's it's a little bit thicker and you put on another layer. Okay, so the plaster is a little thicker now and you can scoop it up with your hand. And so I like to kind of just shimmy it on there and see it's now it's thick enough that it'll stay. Something that's really important is that you think about uh, the sculpture underneath and how thick you are. Because I've seen molds where it's like four inches thick in one spot and then an eighth inch thick on the tip of a thing. So, you know, be conscious of that. Be conscious of, okay, I got these ears that stick out. I need to make sure that I get some plaster on those ears. Um, now, I'm very confident I have enough down in this area where it's sagging to, uh, and I'll pull some of that up, but you just basically take this thicker plaster and work it up and, and just be aware where stuff is before it gets covered up so you get plenty of plaster on it. Now, we're going to do another batch after this one for the hemp, but... Um, the, 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 the thing that's nice about a second batch, even though it's not absolutely necessary, I mean, you can do it in, in one batch when you get really good, um, especially something small like this. But since it, this is something that you're new to, the second batch just gives you the ability to make sure you got enough plaster everywhere so that it's not going to uh, be too thin. And so that's... That's just all right. It takes a little of the heat off. The main focus of the first coat is to make sure everything is covered and all details are, are um, in the mold from brushing with the brush both directions. So your little monster is um, very close to coming to life. However, unlike Bob Ross's little happy trees, he's not a happy monster. So now I'm going to be a little less refined and we're just going to get a bunch of plaster in here. We're going to make a much thicker batch for the hemp. So uh, the the sculpture has been preserved and with good plaster and stuff now we're just gonna we're gonna put this on to get a nice smooth layer and i wouldn't worry about the outside of the mold if you run out of time and it looks kind of rough that's not what is important what's important is inside now i've got this nice thick stuff that's i'm not having to wait for and i'm just going to smooth it on get one layer on. You can take a little bit of this hemp and put it in the plaster. Our little one in back. Then just cover that. 
But that hemp, if you decide to use it, boy, it makes for a tough little mold. And even if the mold cracks, I mean, you can still drop it and crack it with hemp. The hemp will hold it together and uh, just makes it that much easier to patch. And you can patch it. Now, you could, to make this mold look fancy, you could put a little water on it. You might be tempted to do that. I would recommend it against it. We used to bring out Ken Stanell, who is a professional mold maker. And uh, he said that he didn't like to do that because it tempered the plaster. So, you know, so I think what that means is it doesn't breathe as well if you do that. So I wouldn't, even though the mold might look a little nicer. All right, here's another tip. At this point, I can get this plaster off my hands pretty well, and I can rinse my hands off. But if you wait till it's really dry, then it's hard to get off. You gotta, you know, really, yeah, you might lose a few hairs and things, but just get the bulk of it off and then get a bucket of water. Now here's something super critically important. Don't go in the sink with hands like this because the plaster will set in your pipes and old Ruder Ruder can't help you every time. So um, any kind of cleanup, whether it's your equipment or your hands, do in a bucket and throw it away. <laughs> Don't send it down the drains. Trust me on that. We've done it. I'm gonna wash my hands, I'll be right back. All right, one other thing you can do while the plaster is soft is carve the name in with some kind of a tool. So this were um, Bert? No, maybe we'll just call it Alien. Alien Zombie, that'll work. Now, you may come up with a much better name later, but you'll be able to find it. You won't have to, you won't have to be like looking and trying to decipher. Wonder what that is, because everything's in reverse. All right, so that's it. We're going to let this harden a little bit. Probably, mm, it's probably a good idea to let it harden for half an hour or so. And, um, and then uh, we're gonna peel the clay out and fill it with latex and that'll be it. While we're waiting, why don't you click the subscribe button? And then the next time we do a Monster Lab video, you'll know right away and boy, is it gonna be exciting. We're back. Okay, so now you just got to get the clay out of this thing. So we're going to get it off the um, off the base that I made. So inside is all the clay that needs to be dug out and um, I use uh, several different tools. Most of them are loop tools like this. To start with I'll use a big tool like that to get out the bulk of the clay. Being careful not to scrape the sides of the, the plaster. Then here's a metal loop tool that works very good. You can actually hit the plaster as you're working with this thing won't hurt it and then a much smaller tool for fine details to get in there and hook at this side we've got really little bits of clay and so we're going to peel the clay out take your time and uh, get it cleaned out well if you have access to air compressed air you can just hit it with air and that'll help you uh, uh, get it out but if not just be patient get it all out and then you're ready to pour it up now Next episode, we're going to show you how to pour the liquid latex into the mold and, and to dry it and pull it, and then we're going to paint it, and that's what's coming up next. So 
Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.